Now, remember I told you, 2013 is about to end and New Year is about to begin. Amen? All right. Now, the truth is, a lot of people will have a New Year resolution somehow. Right? If you're one of them, it's okay. Because I'm one of them. You know, sometimes, you know, at the beginning of the year, oh, I will read my Bible this year straight forward and then uh, every day. And then sometimes I miss and stuff because uh, I have to prepare on other stuff on the Bible. But, uh, you know, oops, I'm guilty of that too. Sorry. Okay? And then some people will have a resolution or goals like losing weight. Amen. Oh, can I have a good news? Oh, oh, I want to see that, Sister Malou. What are you saying? <laughs> now, uh, but I, I want to share this with you. Last week, um, Friday, they weighed me and I think I'm 186.7 or something. Oh, yesterday, I'm 178.8. This morning, I'm 181. <laughs> I've been, because um, my doctor says, uh, in saying that, my doctor told me I need to rest a little bit and lose weight uh, because of my diet and everything. So I went back to almost vegan, except last night, my cousins and my other cousins and the Gambobas, we hang out for, you know what? We love the sport of fighting. And so we have a <laughs> crispy pata and all that. So that's why I'm 181. But sometimes our goals on our New Year's resolution is eat healthy, clean living, go to the gym regularly. How many of you have that for 2013? And then you miss not, not really regularly, right? And then what else? Giving up bad habits. Spend wisely and so on and so forth, right? But let me tell you this you rarely hear people have a spiritual New Year resolution. You rarely hear them, right? Are you with me on that one? Now, let me tell you this if you ask me today, Pastor, what spiritual New Year resolutions you can advise us or suggest to us, right? Now, today I will give you a spiritual New Year resolutions. And I pray, and I pray, all of us here in this room and those who listen to us through the way of internet will apply these things. Amen. I want to hear amen on that. Amen? Yeah. Okay. In, in, in saying amen, it means we're together on this one. Alright? They're spiritually healthy for us. So I entitled this message, My Spiritual New Year Resolutions. So please turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. You guys all there? If you don't know how to find the book of Ephesians in your Bible, please ask your neighbor. It's okay to ask them. You know, and um, if you notice, I encourage our church all the time to bring their Bible because I want you to get familiar with the book. Amen? So, Ephesians chapter 4. Now, let me give you a little bit of background in the book of Ephesians here. Just quick background. Chapter 1 through chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians deals with Christian calling. Our calling. Paul wrote chapter 1, 2, and 3 reminding the Ephesians of their calling. Amen. You were called what? As children of light. You were called as Christians. Amen. Do you know that? Amen. Amen. Right. Now, chapter 4 through chapter 6, Paul 
urges us or urges his readers to walk worthy of their calling. And so that's why chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 of the book of Ephesians were all applications. How to. Kind of like that. Are you with me? And so, in saying that, my spiritual New Year resolutions will get it from the Apostle Paul. This is his recommendation, if you would. And so this is my recommendation also to you. Amen. Now look at this. Let me help you break down the text this morning. If you take note, verse 17 through verse 19 is the life of the unbelievers or the character of the old man. Now, from verse 20 through verse 24, it's more on putting on the new man. Now, verse 25 through verse 32 is the conduct of the new man. That is our application this morning. Amen. All right. Now, let's look at the character of the old man. Let me read it to you. Our first outline, verse 17 through verse 19 says, Paul said to the Ephesians, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, having alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness that is the character of the old man now christians listen to me on this christians okay before you open your heart to our Lord Jesus Christ, that is you, right there. Verse 17 through verse 19. Are you with me? Now, notice, I address the Christians. Now, if you're not a Christian, Christian yet, guess what? You're still on this point right here. Verse 17 through 19. So Paul says, Therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk. You see, the word walk there in the New Testament, it is more about your conduct, your behavior. That you should no longer walk or behave as the rest of the Gentiles walk. In other word, words, Christian, guess what? Don't walk, don't live your life like the unbelievers because you're different from them. Amen? Christians should know that, right? You know that. And then it says there, how do they walk? In the futility of their mind. Now, if you're taking note, verse 17 through 19, the character of the, the old man is this. We are aimless. Aimless. Because when Paul says, in the futility of their mind, it means worthless. They're aiming nothing. Unbelievers. When we were unbelievers, you know, if you can go back, you know, we're aimless. We're worthless. We, we live our life. We don't have any goals. Are you with me, folks? It is that they are filled with things that leads to nothing. Remember, before Christ, your life is filled with things that leads to nothing. Oh, I don't want to give an example here, but I'll give it anyway. You know? <laughs> we live our life, let's say, we waste our time on nightlife. Amen? Well, I don't know about you, I'm just giving my example right now. I waste my life, you know, before Christ. Nightlife. 
drinking parties, what else? You know, things that is so, so um, unprofitable. Do you understand that? And that is a life that is aimless, worthless life. So verse 17 is aimless, if you would. And then verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. They were estranged from the life of God. Why? Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. The word blindness here, it is more insens insensitivity or callousness. You know, sometimes the reason why people were blinded, it's because they're insensitive. They're callous. They're callous because they enjoy so much of the lifestyle that is contrary to the Word of God. You know, if you enjoy a lifestyle that is contrary to the Word of God, guess what? This will make you blind. This will make you blind. This will make you callous. And so verse 18, it would be blindness. So if verse 17 is, is aimless, verse 18 is blindness. Now, who being past feeling, it means insensitive, have given themselves over lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Now let me pause a little bit here in verse 19. Let's use... Um, I'm not going to use any Greek word this morning, but I will give you the meaning of them. Alright? Now, those words in verse 19, being past feeling right there, it means insensitive. Okay? Unbelievers are insensitive, have given themselves over to lewdness. The word lewdness here, folks, the deeper meaning of lewdness is this. Excessive pleasure, absence of restraint. No self-control anymore. I mean, when it comes to fun, ah, oh, they will have fun and then, then they forget, oh my, what have I done? Have you had that kind of experience? Now, folks, I want to be honest with you, okay? I'm your pastor. There's sometimes when there's so much fun, I get carried away, you know? I get carried away, I end up going home, and I kind of go, ah, why did I do that, you know? If you have those kind of experiences in your life, that you you did something, and then you went, you go home, then you're in your home, you just kind of go, oh man, why did I do that, you know? Why did I do that? And then next thing you know, it's kind of too late, right? After you have shown everybody what you are what what you have done, you can oh I wish I wish you can you you have a, a rewind of time right you can rewind it I would have done it something else something different you know hey amen I mean is it just me please don't leave me hanging here folks I'm sharing you my my personal experience like that. I can't believe he's doing that with that look, you know. And guess what? You're guilty too, okay? Let me tell you this. You're guilty also, all right? I know. How do I know? And sometimes I hang out with you. I know that. <laughs> but you don't want to admit it, so I have to <laughs> reveal it to you. Is that okay? All right? Hey, the Bible says we need to correct each other, right? You have to correct me, I have to correct you. We have to sharpen each other, you know? And so I'm giving you a spiritual New Year resolution, right there. And so that is lewdness. And then in verse 19 also, there's the word uncleanness. That is moral uncleanness with greediness. Wow. So we have lewdness, uncleanness, and greediness. What is greediness, folks? They never had enough. They never satisfied. They can never be content. That is the life of the unbelievers, their characters. Amen. Now, so if I told you this aimless life, a blind life, 
and also in decent life, shameless and careless life. That is our own nature. Do you agree with me? Because we see this here. The Word of God revealed it to us. Now, in saying that, that shouldn't be named among us. Because we are a different man now. To those who are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says they are a new what? Creation. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why, but in saying that, as Christian, they call this sanctified life. It's a life, uh, sanctification is a process, if you will. The Lord sanctifies us already, amen, through His blood, right? But the life, a sanctified life is process. I believe until the Lord take me away, my, I'm still in that sanctification, you know, though I'm justified and all that. Do you understand? And I can't wait for all of us to be glorified. Amen? You understand that now? Now let's look at the second outline, verse 20 to 24. Put on the new man. Look at verse 20. Paul says, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus. Amen. The truth is in Jesus, right folks? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the truth, you can only find it in Jesus. And so what Paul was saying here, but you have not so learned Christ. In other words, Jesus is different. That is not what you learn from Jesus Christ. This kind of life, aimless life, blindness, indecent, shameless, carelessness, kind of like that. That's not what you've learned from Jesus. Actually, it's the opposite of that. That's why Paul was saying that you put off, in verse 22, concerning your former conduct, the old man. What is the old man? The old man is verse 17 through verse 19. That is your old man. Put that off. Remove that life. That endless life. Don't live your, don't live a foolish life. Amen. A, I mean, foolish lifestyle is endless life. Endless life. Amen. Now remove that off. Put off the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now, what is the deceitful lust here? Deceitful lust that thinks to please itself whatever it takes whatever it takes that's lust deceitful lust some people <laughs> as long as they can enjoy pleasure whatever it takes as long as I can be sat as long as I can satisfy my flesh kind of like that so put that off put that off Amen. Is that a good New Year's resolution for us or what? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If we say we're a Christian, folks, Christians, we talk the talk, we should walk the walk. Amen. Now, look at this. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, the word renewed there is made young. Like changing your mind, the way you think. The way you think. Changing your mind, the way you think. You know, I believe most of the time, folks, the way we act, um, this way or that way, because uh, we think this way or that way. You see, sometimes here, it needs a renewal. Refresh. We need to refresh our mind. We need to, to change the way we think. Amen. That's why in Philippians, let me give you some healthy uh, uh, things that you need to think through. Okay. Paul says to the Philippians, Finally, brethren, 
whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if, the, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. In other words, renew your mind on these things. Don't think of evil stuff, you know? You understand that, folks? Now, and it says in verse 24 of Ephesians chapter 4, and that you put on, so you put off the old man, put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we need to put on what? The new man. The new man is the Christ-like man. Or can I add also women? <laughs> right? Because sometimes people might ask me, how come you just want to say men? I'm talking about like us Christians, whether male or female. You need to put on. What about those in between? There's no in between Christians. <laughs> Just male or female. We understand that. Amen. So you put off. You put off the old man. The aimless. The blind. The indecent. Shameless. And careless. And put on the new man. The new creation. Amen. Isn't that awesome? You know what, folks? What I love about being a Christian is this. The Lord can change us or change us from the old man to a new man. Hallelujah. That is beautiful, folks. That is beautiful. Now, in saying that, what Paul is saying, don't be like the unbelievers. Don't behave like them because you're changed. You're new. You're a different person. You guys are different. You're different people. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so don't behave like them. Now, the question is this that I have from the Apostle Paul. Any suggestion, Paul, on how to put on the new man? That's my question. If you say put off the old man and put on the new man, give me some suggestion, please. And I'm glad I asked that question because Paul continued on in giving us suggestion. This is how we do it from verse 25 and the following verses. Okay, here we go. So if you ask Paul, Apostle Paul, how can I put on the new man? He'll probably say, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> now look at verse 25 to 32. This is the conduct of the new man. For you who take note, this is the conduct of the new man. Verse 25. Therefore, conclusion right here. Putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. So number one suggestion of the Apostle Paul is this. Don't lie to each other. Okay? Don't even lie to your pastor too. Oh, how come I didn't see you last Sunday? Pastor, I got stomach ache. No, you're just there because you watch your cowboy, UFC, golf, or something. So I don't even lie. I just sometimes if I ask you or something, you don't have to lie. You. Know, if I go, oh, I didn't see you last Sunday. You know. Oh, sorry, Pastor, I missed the church. See, I'm teaching you how to answer me. It's not a big deal. I'm sorry, Pastor, I missed the church. It's between you and the Lord and that from that point. You see? But please, please don't get mad if I'm just doing my duty as your shepherd. Yeah. Amen. Amen? It is my duty to look for you. 
If I don't look for you, then I'm a bad pastor. <laughs> Right? I mean, if I'm taking care of sheep, because God told me to take care of my, this part, some of my sheep right here, and one is missing, I mean, you know, but in our size right now, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know all our names, no. you, all your names, you know, there's a time, you know, I call you Jeff, and then your name is James or something, <laughs> and then I just kind of, but you know what I mean, I'm just doing my part. But lying, remove lying from one another. Amen, folks? Because notice, why? You ask why? Verse 25, the second half, it says, For we are members of one another. We are members of one another. Did you know our relationship here, folks? We're not just like church goers on Sunday, we bump each other on elbow. God bless you. Good to see you today, then that's it. Folks, we are members. Not just members of the church. Deeper than that, we are members of the body of Christ. We don't lie to each other. Do you understand that? Hey, Tom, where are you? I don't know. You know? I mean, if this one lies to this one, guess what? You go around here, you're the same part of the body. Amen? Wow. Number two suggestion of the Apostle Paul. How to put on the new man is this. This is your New Year resolution. Our New Year resolution. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Amen. You know, you can get angry, but do not sin. You know, what the Apostle Paul is saying here, I believe is this. If you get mad with someone, all right, <laughs> you make sure you settle that anger. Okay, don't let the sun go down and give. And what? Plates to the devil. If you carry anger in your heart, it will become grudge or bitterness. Isn't it true? Grudges, you know, just like learn how to forgive, especially for the husband and wife, amen, in the house. You sleep on the next room, okay? I don't like how you act kind of like that. that, that that's the way they act because I can't even take them off to the hand. Okay? Kind of like that. The, for the dude, it's like this, the husband. Oh man, if I do this now, you know I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'll tell my wife, shush, 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 woman, ow! I know that. Oh, that's no good. That's no good. No, I've learned that from Dennis. <laughs> Sorry, brother, you're not joking. Yeah. <laughs> With Brother June, is a little bit different. <laughs> Brother June, please show yourself here. <laughs> but Sister Mom, he told me this. She makes me mad at my fist. Open the front of me. Why? Well, he'll have a bag of pancet. Where you want me? <laughs> you know? No, they just help folks. <laughs> Her <laughs> brother Jim also told me this. <laughs> when I know a modest man, or you know what, I come home like I'm the real man, and I see Amalia on her knees, really, with the broom <laughs> poking me underneath the table, the table. <laughs> anyway, not that. Okay, but. <laughs> No, folks, sometimes we need to settle the matter before the sun goes down. Amen? Because if we did it, you know, the enemy can whisper things into our ears. And a small matter, a matchlight will become a forest. That's what Paul is saying here. Be angry and do not sin. Do not sin. 
Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Perhaps you have brother or sister here in the house. I haven't talked to her or to him for a long time. Why? Because we have something in the past. Let me tell you this. Right now, probably you don't know it's becoming a forest fire already. You know? Forget. Forget. Move on. The year is almost over. New year, new beginning is happening. Amen? You know, you cannot really move on if you have grudges, bitterness in your heart. How can you start a new year without this? Don't carry anything what this year, you know, gave us. You know, it's those bitterness, anger. You just can't go, ooh, let go. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. Amen? Because what? For we are members of of what? Of one another. <coughs> Number three suggestion, Paul. Let him who stole is steal no longer. No stealing. Amen. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no stealing, folks. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, what is good. That he may have something to give him who has need. So, check this out. The third suggestion of all no stealing, but working. Working, says. But notice here, folks. His encouragement here, working not for himself alone, but also to help those who are in need. Amen? When God bless you with an energy, bless you with a job, bless you with a nice job, if you would, and you're earning some money, the Lord bless you that. Amen? You can't say, I'm a hard worker. You know, the reason why you're a hard worker is because of the Lord. But what you earn is not only just for you, what the Scripture is saying. You know, you need to help those who are in need with the blessing that God has blessed you so that you can be a channel of blessing to others. Amen? They understand that. Now, number 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Amen. I love that. I love that, folks. When Paul says, let no corrupt word, the word corrupt there, it means Rotten or foul. Now I ask myself, what? Lord, give me some example. Lord, I need an example of a rotten and foul words. Gossip. Hello? <laughs> Gossip. Amen. Hello? When we slander. Words that destroy reputations. Christians, Woo, what, a, what a New Year resolution for us. Amen. So, and then Paul suggests that, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers? In other words, remove rotten, Foul words such as gossiping, slandering, uh, dirty jokes, and all that. But change it to what is good for necessary edification. The word good here means profitable. Now, the word edification means building up spiritual advancement. So instead of gossiping, instead of slandering, instead of saying dirty jokes, hey, basically let's talk about something that will help each other build our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Guess what, folks? If you don't take this New Year's resolution, I like that. I like that. I like them. So I pray. You like them too. And I also want to pray that all of us will apply this in our lives. We have a new year. It's a new beginning. Now look at verse 30. The fifth suggestion. 
So I'm here. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Did you know the Holy Spirit sealed us? When we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is like our seal. Seal until the day of what? Redemption. And the way the Holy Spirit sealed us, guess what? He lives in us. And, you know, the word grieve here, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, means offend. Now, we grieve the Holy Spirit, we offend the Holy Spirit when we lie to our neighbor, okay? Do you understand that? Um, when we became angry and sin and, and when we hold grudges and when we cannot forgive like that, when we steal, when we are being lazy, kind of like that, and doesn't want to work, when we say corrupt words, guess what? The Holy Spirit is not at home in us. We offend the Holy Spirit. Now, in saying that, next time you lie, <laughs> next time you steal, next time you gossip, remember this. Remember this. I am offending the Holy Spirit that lives in me. Oh, that's heavy. Amen? Sorry. Sorry for that, but I have to tell you, really. Sorry, but no sorry, really. If you understand my point right there. We're grieving the Holy Spirit. We're offending the Holy Spirit when we live a life that is not pleasing to Him. You understand it. So in this, the suggestion of Paul will take care of our tongue, will take care of our behavior, and guess what? Will you please join me starting next, today, even today, I was going to say next year. Now I gave you several days to do something bad. No, starting today, our conversation should be changed. Our lifestyle should be changed. Amen? Lord, you hear your people say amen to that. Now, another suggestion of Paul. Number six, suggestion. So verse 31 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor. Now you know what bitterness is. Wrath, it means to be. Uh, wrath is a violent motion or passion of the mind. Kind of like that. Let all bitterness. I mean, to be hurtful and destructive to others. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, what else? Clamor. You know what clamor means? Controversy. Oh, a lot of people like that. You know, I'm not saying you guys. There are some people that are very controversial. Ah, you know what? I don't like to hang out with people who are controversial. They always see things that could... Let me tell you this. How do you identify a person very controversial? Kind of like that. They always see negative things, right? They only bring up negative stuff. You know? Is there any positive thing in you or that you can see? Kind of like that. See? Little bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now the word malice is the desire to harm another. So remove all of that. Remove all of that. Do you understand that brothers and sisters? It's quiet in here. What is happening here? You know, I believe the Holy Spirit is doing surgery in our hearts. Amen. So I just let the Holy Spirit say, do your work now Lord. Do your work now Holy Spirit. And then, here's the positive Suggestions on verse 7. Be kind to one another. The word kind means profitable, good, gentle. So be profitable to one another. Be good to one another. Be gentle to one another. Amen. Isn't it true, folks? Even we Christians, sometimes we are hard on each other. Amen? Yeah. Be gentle. Be profitable. Now, when you come to the place, when you come to a fellowship, what can I kind of hear? 
No. How can they benefit from me on this? I think we should change our mind on that. How can they benefit from me on this one? I'm talking about spiritual. Amen? How can they benefit from me spiritually? Even materially if you want to bless them. Amen? This will change. This will change relationships in the body of Christ. Amen? So be kind to one another. And what else? Be tender-hearted to one another. The word tender-hearted here is full of compassion to one another. Forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. You know, let me tell you this. Forgiveness is very good. Right, folks? You understand it? You know, I have learned. I have learned. No, I've learned this from a movie. I have to be honest with you, folks. I was watching this diary of black woman or something like that. I just ran it, I just flipped in the channel. And it just happened, they're talking about forgiveness. So my ear went like, oh, I'm going to hear what the secular movie will say about forgiveness. And if the mother or whatever, the one of the character says, you have to forgive him. She says to her daughter, forgive him, because they're having a miracle like problem. You know, because forgiving him is not just also for him, but it's also for you. Isn't it the Lord says, forgive because you were forgiven also? If you don't forgive, then I can. Can I paraphrase that? Forgiveness, folks, it's, it brings healing. It brings healing. Let me tell you that. If you have bitterness probably right now, if you have anger right now in your heart toward a person, it's time to forgive. Because that bitterness affects you more than probably affects them. You understand? Did you learn something, folks? I can have another sermon on this. Actually, I prepared up to chapter 5, but uh, I just put their Ephesians to chapter uh, 4 and verse 30. Did you guys learn something? Is that a good suggestion from the Apostle Paul or what? Man, I pray that all of these things will change our attitude, will change our behavior now. We change the way, it will change the way we talk to each other. It should be our words for each other is just building up, building up. Building up. What I expect from you, church, is a word of edification always. If you say amen to the message this morning, and this is not my message, it is the message of the Lord to us. Amen? Did you guys learn? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And if we have this kind of attitude, if we practice this, this coming year, oh man, we are going to be different different will be a lot better than what we live here on the 2013 and what we are going for shooting for for the 2014 amen i i think i should remind you on these things every now and then amen